Today in the news, we got a tiny bit of AMD, some RTX 3060, and some Xbox. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Now, like I said, it's just a tiny nugget of info. Frank Azor, chief architect of gaming solutions and marketing at AMD, posted a tweet with some lyrics from 1982's Tomorrow by Annie. Essentially, that means AMD probably has something planned for tomorrow. Probably related to the RX 6000 series of GPUs, in fact. I'll keep you in the loop once the information actually comes out, but don't hold out for a full reveal. So far, marketing has done nothing for AMD's position against Ampere, and I highly doubt that a tiny tweet like that will change anything. Moving on, we got NVIDIA. We're a little over a week from the release date for their first high-end Ampere GPU, the 3080. And while both the 3080 and 3070 are great options with pretty insane specs, you gotta wonder what will come under them. Well, according to past lineups, it should be the RTX 60 series, and we have some specs. The information comes from Copite7Kimmy over on Twitter, who has successfully leaked most of the specs for the RTX 3000 series so far, and he says that the the next step down from the RTX 3070 will be the RTX 3060 Ti or Super with 4,864 CUDA cores. Not only that, but it should also feature 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Now, so far, we don't have proper reviews of the upcoming 3000 series of GPUs, so approximating from those is kind of useless. But if we only look at the CUDA core count, it would be about 17% slower than the RTX 3070. Since this is likely the Super or TI variant, this means the regular 3060 should also be in the books. I swear to God, if they have the same VRAM config as last gen with the 60 series having 6GB of VRAM and the 60 Super having 8, NVIDIA is going to have a bad time with the press. What do you guys think? Also, with NVIDIA, it looks like Ampere might be a great overclocker after all, as long as you can feed it with enough power. Custom card manufacturer EVGA posted a video last week about the RTX 30 series of GPUs, and in that video, they slipped in some Precision X1 screen grabs for the RTX 3090. This seems to be for their For the Win 3 custom cards, which, by the way, look like toy garbage in my opinion. Why put a red accent on an RGB card? Anyways, if this promo material is correct, the 3090 could be overclocked to anywhere between 2010 MHz and 2100 MHz. That's on par with Turing in terms of uh, clock speeds. Even before that, we also saw Zotac reveal a clock speed of 1933 MHz for the 3080. All of those clocks are a lot higher than the Founders Edition stock boost clock for the 3090. Of course, GPU Boost will do its magic to bump that up, but that's a good indication of how far these cards can go. Now, these numbers could be placeholders, but would both companies really risk it? Oh, and by the way, did you guys notice something weird about the RTX 3080 Founders Edition logo on the back of the card? Look at it for a second. Now, look at the 8. It's upside down. It's not important, but you know, now you can't unsee it. Thank me later. Moving on, we got Microsoft. We've heard rumors about the cheaper Xbox Series X. Well, its design was leaked earlier today. In fact, it got leaked so hard that Microsoft decided to just officially unveil it. There it is. It's nearly 60% smaller than the Series X and seems to be focused on 1440p gaming. Specs-wise, those were leaked earlier, but we don't know if these are the official specs just yet. It would still sport 8 Zen 2 cores from AMD clocked at 3.8 GHz without SMT, and 3.66 GHz with SMT enabled, the graphics would be a severe cut down from the Series X with only 20 compute units for a total of 1280 stream processors clocked at 1.55 GHz for 4 teraflops of FP32 compute performance, and in terms of memory, it would sport 10 GB of VRAM with 7.5 GB available for games, and it would still support ray tracing. Storage was actually officially revealed at 512 GB for the internal NVIDIA. VME SSD, and there's no disk drive. Price-wise, it's going to be $299 USD or $379 Canadian. With the pretty low specs, I'm not sure if it can actually really handle 1440p at 120fps for AAA games. Games will probably be downgraded to achieve higher res and frame rate, which is a bummer. Anyways, what do you guys think about the design? Do you like that it looks like a Bluetooth speaker or a front-loading washing machine? Let me know down below. 
And that is pretty much it for the catch up, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. I heard you looking for me round a black 5930K, cause I'm unlocked. H440 with an H100. Die. Man, look at all these hard drives. That 34 inches needs something good to get it straight.